I don't. This will be interesting. So, um, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, everything's sort of working. Um, I had a few interesting things with pulse width modulation um, and the pulse output on the AS3340 being a bit weird. Uh, what happened in the meantime is I've got myself some proper. See them there? Curtis Electronics CM3340 Rev G's. So these are the ones I started making back in about 2015. Um, so proper Pucker Curtis chips. Now I've not turned this on yet. I've not tuned it. I'm probably going to have some really uh, intimate connections. But let's see what happens if I turn this on now. Okay, well we've got sounds. Nothing's blown up so that's a good start. So we'll just go over to here and uh, try and reset some. That's the VCF working. I'll just turn the VCA down a bit. It's a bit loud. Right, that's nothing on. It's a saw wave. Yeah, we've got a saw wave. Let's see how different the tuning was. Probably loads, I'd imagine. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I haven't retuned the oscillators yet. Now, let's have a look at the pulse output because that was a bit that I was expecting to be a bit different. Okay, so we've got some good pulse width modulation going on there. Okay, so nothing too different so far. I'll try the. Um... Yeah, and also I think you can still hear a little bit of that uh, frequency modulation that's happening which is still a bit strange um, I'll try altering the pulse width to be a bit more aggressive because this is this was basically limits to work around issues I've seen on the last uh, AS3040 chip so I'll try that and then record what's happening then okay so with the uh, the pulse width changed um, so it does a bit more of the range because previously it was causing the AS3340 to do crazy things just break the oscillator um, it now seems to be working correctly so that's the PWM voltage on the CM3340 CM you can see when it gets up to nearly 5 volts the pulse weight goes basically to zero um, and the oscillator stops that's what it's sort of clicky here is the oscillator stopping at that point because it's a zero pulse width however it seems to be fine otherwise down to zero volts so the input range on the um, PWM input is zero to five volts uh, as opposed to zero to ten on the frequency input so that's kind of what I'm expecting so that's more normal behavior so it does prove that the AS3040 chips definitely behave a bit differently to the, um, the Curtis electronic ones not that they're not useful but it's something you just have to work around. So I think I'll carry on using the ASF 340s. I mean, it's pin compatible, so I can always swap them out later date if I want to, but considering I've bought loads of them already, I might as well. But the frequency is still varying very slightly. As you can hear, but uh, interesting. So just to demonstrate the difference, uh, I've moved back to the AS3340 chip now, uh, changed the um, pulse output uh, resistor back to 51k as per the spec you're supposed to. Um, not change the software, so the pulse width modulation is exactly the same. And now listen to what it does with the pulse width being the same range as on the Curtis chip. Curtis chip worked fine, as on the last video. Uh, listen to the AS3340. So basically, um, when it reaches a certain level in the range, if you go above that, it just makes the oscillator do something really strange. Um, so, I mean, by swapping out with the Curtis chip, I've proven that it's not how I'm using the chip. Um, I'd say the PWM input voltages to the chip are perfect. It's zero to five volts. Um, nothing's changed there. So, I mean, basically you can work around that in software because I just basically don't use part of the PWM range. It's fine because you can get from uh, zero pulse width 
to 50% duty cycle, using the other half of the range, it works all right. Um, it's just really, really strange. And like I say, I, I lost quite a lot of time thinking I was doing something really strange when it looks like it's just a different behavior on the on the Alpha Par AS3340 chips. So interesting, there you go. So just to show that it'll be okay, um, basically I've just changed the PWM range back to what I have been using. So no hardware changes, just a software change in terms of the PWM scope. So we turn it on now. There you, go, you can hear it going fine. The oscillator doesn't do anything weird. And all is well with the world, so um, that's fine. Sawtooth, it's all looking good. So yeah, you definitely still hear a bit of that frequency modulation as well in the pulse output, but to be honest, I think that will just probably sound like you've got LFO in the detune when you're using the PWM, which I haven't got a problem with because it'll make it sound thicker. Um, once the proper circuit boards are built, I might be able to troubleshoot this a bit more and make some modifications, but um, I'm not too worried about that for now. So I think the next pulse call for this project is going to be wading into uh, multi-layer PCB design. So. Uh, I'll surface at some point and show you what's going on there. So before I get into the PCB design, I thought I'd just uh, fill in some of the things I forgot to mention on my original walk around video. So um, as mentioned, we've got um, a 32 bit processor uh, with free RTOS running on it. That's a real time operating system it's designed for running uh, multitasks. So effectively setting up lots of different tasks to do things, which is absolutely brilliant for this uh, kind of project. Um, so free RTS doesn't normally come as part of the Arduino environment. I had to mess around with quite a lot to actually get to work. I'd previously used free RTOS on, um, on one of my MIDI box based projects, which was my um, SD card sample player. Um, if you go to basemaker.co.uk, there's um, some information on there with the um, links back to the MIDI box project and things. So uh, I've got essentially tasks that look for uh, incoming MIDI events. The MIDI events are all processed by uh, a USB MIDI set of libraries, uh, which again, went <laughs> working properly out of the box, so some messing around there. So notes that come in or um, continuous controller events that come in are processed um, periodically, and that'll be fast enough to sort of keep up with the incoming MIDI stream, hopefully. Um, we've then got tasks that update the sample and hole circuitry. So uh, roughly every couple of milliseconds or so, all of the sample and hold uh, outputs, so all the voltages basically that are generated uh, from the, the sort of digital to analog circuitry will be refreshed. So that will mean that, uh, you know, control changes will be pretty snappy because it'll be refreshing probably, you know, 500 times a second. Um, so we've also got tasks that have some software LFOs in there. So I'm using that for things like um, modifying the pulse width at the moment, modifying the resonance control, another LFO. Uh, we've got some envelope generation going on. And um, uh, what else have we got? Uh, oh yeah, processing commands such as switching the waveform. So when you want saw, pulse or triangle to go on or off in any combination, that's all processed there into a shift register. The shift register then um, controls the CMOS switching after the VCO. Um, what else have we got going on? So I didn't really demonstrate the filter last time I realized. Uh, so I'd say what we've got is the AS3340 VCO going into uh, the CMOS chips that select which waveform you want. We've then got a VCA stage, which is gonna be used as part of mixing several oscillators together per voice. At the moment, there's only one VCA mixing one oscillator because that's all that's built on the board, but it's it's just the same extended design for the rest of it. We then go into the, the VCF, which is a 3320 VCF, um, and then a final VCA stage, which is used for envelope generation. There'll be two uh, in the final thing per voice, one for left, one for right. So we can do excuse me, envelope generation and panning at the same time. So I say MIDI events are all over USB at the moment, so I'm using Reason as effectively a virtual keyboard. Um, and if I put a sequence on, this is just firing MIDI notes 
where everything's done there. As I mentioned last time, I've um, I've got a knob signed on here to cut off frequency, but I didn't show you what, what it sounds like. So this, this is what the filter sounds like. As I move the knob, turn the amp up a little bit. Output. And as I said, the uh, serial commands are available so we can turn things on and off. So just turn the saw off, turn the pulse on. And then I've got VSA level again. Back and onto the filter. There you go, doesn't sound too bad. Um, there's a bit of clicking and, and whatnot. Um, I'm sharing a few of the sort of power supplies between analog and digital at the moment. Obviously the layout is horrendous being on a breadboard. I'm hoping a lot of that will improve when um, I've got a proper PCB laid out. I've got decent decoupling, ground planes, all that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, there you go.